And here we go. This is Flash at In a Perfect World on the 29th of September, 2000, or 2020. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Grim. Give me a place to play on the radio tonight. And I'm going to do a, do a quick hour and enlighten you with all the opinions I have gathered about all this stuff happening. How's that? So I guess I'm live. Yeah, there he is. Grim sees me. Here's me. And for your uh, for your chatting, I want to go to the Arlen and discuss the color blue. We've got bots and bodies. Barman, Beetle, Cowboy Tech, Grimnir, Moose Girl, Kate, Anti, Asmo, Circlo, Hello, Woody. Chloe, Dan Van Meter, me, flash somebody, Frumpy Work from up the north way, Jays, Nines, Jays, Meister Brow, Novid, hey duh, Prince, Rob Works, the Bubbler, Trust No One, Vanna White, Weather Dork, The Phantom, CC66, Chloe, Cyborg, Noodle, and Civ, Frumpy again, Matt, WJ2002, Pone Sauce, Smart As, The Holiest, Roger, and Z Picks. So if you're chatting or posting, those are the names to deal with. The greatest thinking minds of the 21st century have gathered. And then we all gathered over here while they're doing that. Ha <laughs> ha. Guess not so funny. So, what? Lately, I've been watching a lot of stuff on the uh, YouTube, and they're pushing the shit out of Australia on me. They want me to know all the horrible shit that uh, the premier of Australia is doing to the Australian people. But no other country in the world is getting pushed on me on my YouTube as hard as Australia. Kind of wondering why. I've been, you know, watching it because it's curious. And it's a little exotic with the accent and whatnot. And then, of course, <clears throat> what's going on? If you're a masker, -er -er -er, I would assume it would just um, fuel your belief in the covid thing and if you're sensible and know better you can see the fraud hard at work it's a beautiful game i wish i would have thought of this eat your vegemite flash says grim near <laughs> gonna eat shit i do the want <laughs> i'm out of control <laughs> except for when when cirque says hey do this Eh, sometimes I do. But the rest of you people, nah, wait, wait in line. You're you're after Cirque. There you go. Anyway, so uh, kick off the show tonight with a title, and I gave this baby, They Refuse to Admit Fault, is the title of my rant tonight. <laughs> my verbal blah <laughs> all over the radio. But first... Larry Woods and Rob Works have been doing a little thing with me on Thursdays. And Grimm is the guy that puts it out there in, you know, in all the other places for people to check it out. And I like BitChute. And we went, uh, we went on BitChute and the first day we got 100. And it was like the first time. So, whoa. I don't expect any big crowds to be listening to me. But when it comes to Larry, I think Larry's got a... a an easier message to put out there for people to hear. And it's good that he's getting a little of his Facebook crowd. Must be checking him out on BitChute instead of YouTube. So, I, you got to tell people. I guess talking about it on the radio might be redundant to those who know. But that's how they, you know, it's how they do the lying. <laughs> Same fucking thing. You just say it until it's, oh, hey, fucking bad. Well, you shut up already. But you tell the truth instead. It's it's kind of interesting how it works out. And tonight, the 
my topic for the beginning of the show. I think it's going to be about the imaginary rights that we all seem to have. You know, when we're in chat rooms and bars and where else would they work? Chat rooms, bars, maybe a church or two would, you know, because church and state are tied at the waist. Just they, it's real loose rope, so they can take turns. One gets behind the other and does their thing, then the other one gets behind the other one and does their, eh, you know, religion. <laughs> Love your brother, man. <laughs> Just don't get caught, because the penalties are very strict. Oh, my goodness. But we have all these imaginary rights. I didn't even know until uh, I was probably an adult that I needed rights. Didn't never these kind of concepts. I don't remember them coming up. You know, rights, and having them or not having them. We did shit according to what we could afford to do. And when I grew up in the world, that's what your rights were. What you could physically pay your way to do, or supply yourself with. Those dictated what your rights were. But things changed. People got weak, sissified. They liked the state, you know. So instead of starving this fucking thing to death, which they could have done at a point, but yeah, that time came and went. Instead, now they've got people who fuel the beast that they despise. Hmm. I don't get it. They complain about every fucking buddy around them. All the people around them suck and they're all horrible and fuck these idiots and fuck those idiots and all this kind of shit. And it makes me wonder, what kind of eyes are you looking at the world with <laughs> to come out of it with a, you know, a piss poor attitude in, in a time in life where Shit, the state wants you to be angry, isolated, and sick. So, hmm, let's go out into the electronic world and be an angry prick and piss people off. Get them, <laughs> help them feel better. <laughs> but only there's, there's a few of us that are, well, we're easily amused by rude behavior, and we encourage it, and jump on top of it, slap it around. The proper thing to do is to ignore it, but I have a sick sense of humor, and sometimes I find it quite amusing, and I'm going to use my imaginary right of freedom of speech to proclaim to the known world, I can say any damn thing I want to say, whether it's true or not, just like the government, and they do it every fucking day, and if you sit back and watch these performances with politicians in the course of a day you're going to hear yes and no and everything in between it and then nobody's going to ever be accountable for what they fucking said they're going to pass the buck they'll put it on guys like Fauci I mean he's old enough to where who cares what are they going to do to punish this guy jeez take his colostomy bag away from him take his shoe lifts away. I mean, the guy's had it made for a long, long time. So there's really not much you can do to a 75-year-old guy to punish him. <laughs> After he, he he lied to the whole English-speaking world in a few other countries. And with the help of the media convince, and the politicians, convince the populations <laughs> of this totally blown out of proportion, stupid virus thing. <laughs> Whatever the thing is, it's not, it wasn't out of China, it wasn't out of a laboratory. That shit hasn't even started yet, whatever that's about. <laughs> what they got us with so far is politicians overreacting to a, an external threat and mismanaging their old people to death. And after they did it, well, nobody wanted to be accountable for what they had done. Oh, no, no, no. Let's make it bigger. <laughs> let's not stop now. Well, well, it's bad, but hey, let's make it worse. Then they start locking people down. <laughs> okay, if you're not locked down, and, and you, then you got curfews. <laughs> oh, fuck 
you know. And these are countries that were founded by people that escaped countries that did those kind of things to the population. And now the places that were once sought out and looked, you know, people wanted to go there, they're turning out to be the worst prisons available. <clears throat> Bothers some people more than others, I suppose. Now, on the local front, as far as uh, any kind of state intrusion into the personal stuff, not yet. They're still just on the bars and tr transportation. So, um, going out, <laughs> they don't want you to go out. This is the weirdest. How can this possibly be anything other than they're stalling to uh, redirect the money system to take control of it and make it work <laughs> because well it, it hasn't for like a hundred years solid I mean it's, it's over a hundred years but since the inception of the fractional reserve banking practices by the Federal Reserve Bank into the US economy the US has just been like a, a, a train <laughs> going downhill for hundred what six years something like that now, they're running out of track. So, they came up with this hoax to slow everybody down and control them. And they've got, well, they've got a population that's pretty well mixed, you know, because they've got rioters and looters <laughs> that aren't afraid of dying of the COVID. <laughs> and they get out there and, you know, they wear their little paper masks and <laughs> chant shit, throw fire stuff. I know, I guess they hurt each other and however, the whatever's convenient. You know, if it's a car, they'll run you over. <laughs> if you're in their way, they'll knock you down. And according to the interwebs, the links that they push, there's they're picking on the old people, by God and country. So, I'm just disappointed personally in that we have, as, a, as an animal, we've been pushed into a corner so we've been herded so far that we're willing to fight each other and keep the game going. And the game is really fucked up. Look at it. I mean, they've managed to convince people to be afraid of absolutely nothing. It's, it might as well be like uh, yelling fire uh, in a field, in an open field, and have somebody arrest you for scaring the people that aren't there but like I've been saying for the last couple of months I think we've been uh, unindated in all these virus movies and secondhand news imaginary shit you know it's just make-believe and if you don't know anything better then you're gonna believe the story that's that's what we do I think that's how I got through school I heard people tell you this that and the other and I went okay Remember that shit. <laughs> See it on the test. Apply it. Ah, that worked. Okay. But, you know, uh, ignoring people that know stuff is not what I'm doing. <laughs> it would seem that way if you're one of the, I, I guess, the, what would you call them? The victims of the greatest hoax in the history of mankind. This This surpasses religion. I have not. I mean, look at even the religious... No, I guess it's the same in it. They they get the uh they get the members of the thing to enforce the rules of the thing, you know, to help people. So they'll um so they'll be uh hmm. I wonder what the point of being violent to other people to help them out truly is, you know, cuz I seen a vi I'm looking right at the screen. I've got BitChute open, and I've got this thing for uh, the favorite things I like, and they come up right away. And it says assaulted for not wearing for no mask, not wearing a mask. Got this little girl arrested by this gorilla guy who's like twice her size. He's wearing a mask, and all I could think of is if the girl would have just ran, the guy would have never caught her. He would have been falling down like. A hundred yards, maybe. He'd be down there clutching his heart, having a stroke. 
so she'd have probably picked up a murder charge. <laughs> don't take my advice dealing with the police. <laughs> I I don't think it would work well for the person the police are you know intending to help because they're helpful. Boy, those people will. Hmm. They are always there for you. Remember that. I've said it here on the uh, In a Perfect World show. Hmm. And here's something about guns, too. People have all these ideas about gun rights and uh, being allowed to do this and that and the other thing. And I, I learned this at an early age. Since I was a teenager, I learned this part. When I need a gun... A right to have a gun won't mean a fucking thing. <laughs> it won't matter at all. Zero. So, hmm. when I started to think all this stuff through, didn't think I was doing it at the time, but I must have because I've managed to keep my distance from, from guns. I'm not interested in them. If I was, laws wouldn't stop me from getting them. <laughs> So, I would treat the gun as I treat the green. It's there. It's available. I'm going to indulge it. But, fortunately, I don't have a use for a gun. I'm not a hunter. And if I found out I was a psychotic maniac, well, how many people can you kill with a gun in secret? You know, it's, it's a short event. It's not going to last long. And I want something that's going to go on for a while. <laughs> like Hannibal Lecter. Not one of these... Uh, TV show things. Anyway, that was a lot of fun. But, you know, under the threat of force, people will do just about anything that you force them to do. Hmm. And I'm looking at this COVID thing as the perfect way to... Uh, well, of course you're going to get resistance. There's a little bit. There's not enough. But uh, under the threat of force, that threat will make people not want to stand up for their self <laughs> as much as if you just say honey please hold on a second whoa, whoa, whoa that was good anyway but yeah honey please in certain circumstances will do you more harm than good and in those kind of situations People find it necessary to use force. Okay. Well, I understand defending yourself from shit, you know, or... Uh, well, I don't understand is how the police can militarize their self in the fashion they have, right? Just because they're so brilliant. They're, they had such brilliant minds. They saw what was coming to society. And they knew that if they didn't defend themselves properly, they'd all die. <laughs> now, according to them, they're there to serve and protect, but they just don't quite tell you who they're there to serve and protect. But it ain't us. <laughs> it's somebody, <laughs> but it ain't us. Anyway, so they've got this... Uh, Threat of force. And they use it with the mask and the social distancing. What other crap do they come up with? I don't know if they force the hand gel shit on you, but my experience with any of that goop ever, which is why I call it shit today, is I didn't like putting grease on my skin like that. Was, why don't you just become a auto mechanic and work on, you know, changing oil pans? That you know, without gloves or anything, just barehanded and get in there and get greasy. And that's what that shit feels like. So I, I can't be uh, told that there's any benefit to come from me wiping all the bacteria that keeps me alive off my hands with some magic goo. <laughs> now, pass the whole Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, the government has got my back. It's always had my back. Right? And the rest of you out there in Radio Land or RLM Land, you guys know what I'm talking about. It's a big performance on TV, you know, TV shows. If you have a real life and then you've ever been into a courtroom, there's one thing you're never going to see <laughs> in an Admiralty court. 
And that's what you see on TV about Admiralty Court. It's the most boring shit. Bunch of pompous fucking golfers hanging around pretending to have a job. <laughs> deciding deciding people's fate based on paperwork and what's on the record. Fuck the details. <laughs> this is what happened. Blah 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 blah. And but we're told, hey, we get told a good story. We got sold this concept of a constitution and Freedom, Bill of Rights, remember that horse shit? Oh, yeah. You got the freedom of speech, baby. You can go out and say whatever you want, but you better not call that motherfucker a nigger or I shoot you in your face. It's because nigger is a bad word, and only niggers can say nigger. Nigger? Got it? And if you say it enough, you find it ridiculous, okay? But we've been... <laughs> uh, what's the right word? I think we've been polished like a stone with... You interpret these words a certain way to belong to a group of people who are intelligent. Shit like that. <laughs> oh, now the cat wants to chase flies. Oh, this is fun. I'm live, Doc. Come on, give me a break. Anyway. So, I don't know. Just on uh, just an ordinary ranty night. I like being kept confused by the government's ability to pass the fucking buck and change their fucking mind every 15 minutes and blame the other party for what they did. You know, th this has been going on since they created this mess. Bunch of guys sitting at around a table, top, flip a coin. Okay, whose turn is it to be the bad guy? <laughs> yeah, and, and here we are. Poor people. But we're believing, for some reason, that uh, Donald Trump and Joe Biden are sworn enemies by God and country. They want to tear each other apart. One wants to win the seat. But in the meantime, in the moment, I thought these guys were running a country. <laughs> so if you got it both ways, then you really don't have anything. You, you just think you have something. Because exaggerated bullshit got us right to where we are right now. And on just about any level of communication you can just dream up, we've fucked it all up. And now we've got the internet. Hey, Hannah says hi. Now we've got the internet, interwebs uh, to uh, get us together you know, and help people. And it's not working out as well as it could because <laughs> people are calling the lie the truth and the truth a lie. That is our enemy right there. The masses want to be uh, babysat like, uh, wow, I don't know, like children? I don't know. Even children can't even, what the fuck, they're masking and isolating and separating kids. That's got to be the most cruel thing there is. I mean, I didn't get a dislike of people until I became uh, older than a child. My childhood, I didn't, I didn't understand any of that shit. All that disliking people came with, you know, years of uh, school and society managing me so I could learn these things and identify them. You know, so I wouldn't get bamboozled by a bank get tied down to a 30-year mortgage that would balloon halfway through it and bankrupt me. No, 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 no. I went to school to learn all, all about that stuff. But uh, let's use the, the, the hoax. The hoax is real if you believe it's real. That is a given. And I believe that because if somebody believes there was a Jesus, then that person, whoever they are, believes that. And I'm nobody to tell them that they're wrong, but I can have opinion about the source of their information. <laughs> and then the fun begins, because, in my opinion, we're all living on this exaggerated bullshit stories you know, from, from the past. When I was a boy, I had to walk five miles to school through the snow, barefoot, dragging a dead corpse. 
hungry, you know, and it just would, whoever the bad guy, you know, the poor guy was, there was a poorer guy than him, <laughs> or vice versa, but it's easier to claim to have been poor than it is to prove that you are rich, <laughs> so, people, but exaggeration, you know, like now, I, I don't know what the fuck's going on with Trump. Trump is the funniest president. I, I thought Bush was funny, but Trump's even better. And now they've they've got him on. Here we go, people. Taxes. Uh, when is the public going to ever learn <laughs> that this whole thing is all done on computers? It, it, it evolved from paper, keeping score on paper, to now electronically we keep score of this bullshit <laughs> it's not real people have uh, suffered terribly in the last year from you know place to place country to country state to state blah 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 so through all this drama of how bad it's all been for certain places i still <laughs> i still read links claiming there's a uh, and the, there's an epin, economic boom going on. Well, yeah, because the, the banks printed trillions of dollars and gave them all to their friends. There's your economic boom. You know? Oh, yeah, let them play a little longer. We still got some more money to pretend that we're paying them with. It's, it's a big game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I understand that, but I... I some some of the folk that I encounter in physical life, I'm sure they would probably lock me up in a room somewhere all by myself if I tried to explain this to them, because this is not where people are. <laughs> this is a very unique audience that I have. I, uh, uh, well, I traveled a few miles to get it, let's just say that. So... I would assume that to the you know to the normal average what would normal and average be somebody that you know lives in their mom's basement and complains about the generation before them <laughs> something like that anyway let's see what else have I got in store for you folk out there in the radio land tonight hey you know that the perfect trap is the one you want to be trapped in. <laughs> and that kind of limits you. But hey, life's limiting. I, I don't know. I never uh, I never wanted to travel daily. I mean, I would take years where I'd stay in one place for a period of time. But then there was other years where <laughs> a couple of days here was enough. No, I want to go somewhere else. And now I've I've decided that this trap I'm in, Denmark, this trap was more designed for my character, like the, the way they're handling the COVID here. The irritating parts of it, they're not interfering with necessity, but they're irritating with my, uh, my entertainment, I suppose, because uh, I like to go down to the pub. There's people I know there, blah, 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 but now they've got the mask thing going on. And I told Cirque a long time ago, I'm not giving in by, uh, they're not threatening me into it. I have to be forced into wearing a mask. There's no way I'm going to willingly go out there and do it for any reason, period, end of story. So, the mask sign went up in the bar, guess who's not there anymore? <laughs> but the grocery store, <laughs> I don't get it. See, this is uh, political moves made using medical reasons that don't really exist because <laughs> do a little reading if you've heard me on the show you know what i know and if you agree with i with what i know then you know it and if you're dabbling in the uh you know the mainstream government religious bullshit stories that keep everybody all terrified oh i'm scared i'm gonna die well be afraid that's that's up to you but the state wants to take that responsibility of worrying about it and force you to worry about it. So I think that's a little bit unfair. I'm not for that. I'm for government getting their nose away from my ass. 
but unfortunately, that's not how government works. Government is a, it's like a girlfriend that just won't, you know, you keep running into her in public and she don't, won't leave you alone, wants to keep talking and she, wait a minute, thought we were finished. <laughs> it's part ways here. <laughs> but no, there's, you know, see, there's always more problems if you just keep talking. <laughs> Grim was, the, Grim was the hippie. He's talking to Rob and he's talking to Jew Dread in the Real Liberty Media dot com chat, and they're talking about Grim being a hippie. Well, lucky you. You know what? We could always use race and country as a weapon to make other people look a certain way in a certain light by talking about the horrible shithole bit of dirt that they exist on. And we'll give those places names. Ooh, this gets deep. <laughs> anyway, I'm <laughs> just fucking around. Uh, but yeah, exaggerated bullshit. Wearing a mask. There's, wow, this thing, when the end result comes from the wearing the mask up to the time that it's going to, you know, it's going to collapse. These people are going to wear their self out. <laughs> it's bad. And medically, by covering your mouth and inhaling the same shit for periods of time, you actually probably, well, I'm going to assume because of things I've seen, that you'll uh, run a risk okay, of engaging parts of your anatomy <laughs> that have been dormant but will be... Uh, awoken by the activity of breathing in your exhale. <laughs> That's why you don't you weren't born with a mask on to protect you from the air because you're already doing that with yourself. <laughs> but the government, well, the government is here to help you. So they took the exaggeration and just I don't know how they made this work. They did something magical to the uh, to the person on the receiving end of the information. <laughs> I even saw a link today where a guy takes apart in like a minute. He, he's got a, a phone or something, and he finds a tracker. It's a tracker inside the mask, and he un you know opens it with a blade, and sure as fuck, there's shit inside it that this machine and that phone or whatever is reading it where it's at. <laughs> so, yeah, this is about your health, people. I, I do know there is no benefit of any kind to uh, drive around in your car, walk down the street, and nobody around you and, and all that. That's just plain out ignorant. But it's not going to help you do any better next to people, you know, crowds or no crowds. See, what they're leaving out about the whole thing, they 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 skip around it. They don't really come right out and say, <laughs> if you're already ill, they know how to play off that without saying the, those words. So if you're on probably like prescription medication, what is it like? What's the numbers on that, Grim? Do you got any idea the average in America, like one out of four people is on some kind of prescription, uh, pharmaceutical from the government, you know, from the state? Whatever, not the state of uh, Rockefeller medicine. That's approved by the government. They love you to buy into that shit. They got so much debt going into that. <laughs> Rockefellers. <laughs> Jeez. What a bunch of idiots we've turned out to be as a collective. Don't even know wearing a mask is bad for you as a group. Got groups that'll get violent with you and put you in jail. For not sitting and watching a sporting event wearing a mask. Hmm. Hmm. And Grimner says one out of two. Really? That's a lot. Isn't it? Hmm. Well, I don't know. Anyway, so watching these uh, entertaining links on the YouTube about Australia. There's not a lot. They're not giving me anything on America. I guess if I wanted to, I'd have to go search for it. But fuck. 
I don't know. Not really. Oh, hey, speaking of which, I look across and I see something that's posted four days ago. Louisville Unrest uh, live call-in. And it's uh, got 16 people. on. This is on BitChute. So it's probably a small outfit like Grimner. And uh, they're just getting their foot in the door because it takes a while. But there's people out there, you know, that are going to listen to what we say and go, hey, why the fuck do they say that on the news? <laughs> and then there's going to people that, hey, what are they talking about? The government wouldn't hurt us. Terrible people, blah, blah, blah. But, hmm. It's like that guy girl in New Hampshire that got elected to be the sheriff because nobody ran against it, her, him. Well, whatever it is. But I listen to the message, see? I've got that ability, I don't know what it's called, common sense or something, where, you know, just because you, you see a, a box and it's got a tear in it doesn't mean what's inside the box is fucked up. And, but this guy is pretty bizarre looking and he's got an anarcho, anarcho capitalist, what is, however you say that grim thing, the, the circle with the A in it on a sign and took shit for that, for, you know, just no matter what, you can't insult him, him, her because he's a him, her. So that instead of that, now they're going to attack through the anarchist thing and still Avoid listening to the uh, the stand that the, the uh, character took. <laughs> I don't know what to call this person. <laughs> Something. But the message was brilliant. It was based on simple things. And they were talking about, well, they're going to stop the... Uh, they're going to raise the age for selling tobacco from so-and-so to so-and-so. And he points out that all it's going to do is... is the people that are going to want them are going to go out of the area to get them. So you're just chasing uh, you're chasing tax money out. <laughs> this kind of defeats the purpose. So, you know, somebody that thinks like me would understand it's not about tax money or it's about controlling people. And at any level of control, if you abide by these guidelines and participate in them, they got you. And that's what they want. Abiding law abiding citizens so they can count their money at night and know that there ain't a fucker amongst you that's got the nut to stop them. <laughs> and that's how we live. And I don't think if I wa wanted to stop the government around here, I don't think I'd get any support with that. So I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to go with the flow. <laughs> so far. All the uh, all the drama's been in places I lived in before I came here. Oh my goodness! Uh, Scotland's in a shithole over this corona. The corona bug has got the Scots, you know, like the Americans and the Australians. I mean, real tight. They don't want us to move. They don't want us to breathe. They don't want us to. <laughs> they don't want us to do anything. I think they want us to croak. And their exaggerated bullshit story that they put out in the public that has right there in the first thing you look, hey, it's got a 99 point what percent of recovery if you're how old? <laughs> What's the big deal then? Well, if you're 80, <laughs> those numbers drop a little bit. Yeah, well, you know what? All the numbers drop when you're 80. <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter. But people are going to act, okay, see, in, in violence, this is the part that really rubs me raw, in enforcement and in violence, they're going to protect themselves from me, because I could give them a bug that will give them a cold. And they could get a cold. Wow. Now... Take it a step further. Now, this selfish fuck that is so sick already, it's worried about me giving it a cold, is going to get that cold, and then it's going to go French kiss grandma, give grandma that cold, and kill grandma. And there's your problem right there. If these old people would stop kissing their relatives when they come to visit them in the old folks' homes, people would not die so fast of COVID. And I... 
hey, I gave this like five minutes of consideration. I think I thought it through, and that's my decision. <laughs> Quit kissing grandma at the old folks' home, and we can all go back to fucking normal. <laughs> See, because this thing is way deeper. It, they got it on so many different levels. They're controlling Karen through, you know, give Karen some power and she'll, man, she'll blow a duck in the park just to make you suffer. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about. But uh, anyway, maybe that was an extreme example, but screaming at me while you wear a mask for me to wear a mask. I'm going to encourage it. I would hope that the person doing it hits a stroke a few months sooner than they were expected to. Because under those circumstances, why don't I just run and smoke? You know, Go out there and take a nice mild jog. Smoke cigarettes through the whole thing. <laughs> Same as wearing a fucking mask in it. I don't see any difference. <laughs> but then again, I was, you know, I was raised to look up to people like, I don't know, Ted Kaczynski. Not for his murderous ways. No, no, no. That wasn't the smart thing he did. But the smart thing he did was he recognized the fucking monster and knew the monster was going to do what the monster did. And we're in it right now. And whether he wrote it down verbatim in 1910, this is going to happen, in 2010, this is that's not what I'm talking about. He knew that what we're doing is probably the worst thing we could do. It's too late. We're we're in up to our eyebrows. And we're all drowning in this shit. <laughs> Some people claim they enjoy watching it, but I don't. I don't. I don't enjoy the suffering a bit. It makes me upset. When I pass somebody in a mask, I see somebody that was manipulated into a physical action <laughs> because they're loyal to something that doesn't, in my mind, even exist. So, I got a paradox going on here because I'm around status. Yeah, Dan Danes are, and these people, on top of being status, <laughs> they're a fucking tribe. Top that. That's like Go out to the Indian reservation or go out to Australia and go out to the Indian people, you know, the aborigines, mix with them. And what you find out is people are just people. But the way we discuss it, you know, the way it's portrayed on the, on the MSM, it's like people are the fucking same. And they're kind of proving it, you know, with uh, <laughs> the collective stupidity. Except for a few countries like Sweden. And every now and again, I'll see a, an internet link or a news link or something, and they're trying to make Sweden look bad <laughs> for not complying and going along with what failed for everybody else and, and point out you know, the bad side of their choice to not lock down and kill their economy and their people. But I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm hearing it through... Uh, my perspective, of course, which is going to be hmm, just a little narrow in this particular with the Corona Bologna bullshit. Is, for fuck's sake, what's it been now? It's been a year. Well, almost a year. We're coming up on a year. It hasn't quite been. Ten months, something like that. But it's been since February that it started. Hey, fuck this. And then in March, they decided to put the thumb screws down and go full tilt fucking psychotic on population. <laughs> and as far as they could get here is uh, fucking with the bars a little bit. What else? They got the bars in the transit, which is, uh, it's a dent, but it's not a, it's not enough to make the place unbearable. That's, ah, that's probably the word I was looking for because... I'm pretty tolerant of other people's weaknesses, you know. And I might snicker and laugh when I see some healthy person walk past me wearing a fucking face mask that wouldn't stop anything from happening <laughs> for any reason. You're going to get slapped in the face? Believe me, that mask is not going to help you. might even make things just a little worse. You might get a paper cut on your lip. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. What... what I see as protection, and the next idiot sees as protection seem to be 
Wow, two different things. Two different. I think I'm living on a different planet than the rest of most everybody else, or something. Uh, hmm. Li- yeah, living. I don't know. Living in in my mind. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we all live in our mind, and then we just explore out, get on the internet, go outside, and interact a little bit. But the mo- most of it's just inside my head. And it's kind of, uh, what do you call that? It's an interesting thing to try to explain to somebody else. Because I'm sure yours, no matter how similar it is, just like me at Cirque, we've got lots of shit where, fuck, I think like that. And then we got a, a few things where you go, wow, you're nuts. <laughs> uh, but that's, I think that's part of the necessary flow. You know, you can't have, something has to, it can't always be the same. That's, what would you call that? Well, it's always the same with a little twist. <laughs> Let's say that. Because the, uh, the language is infinite. You can always find something. Just grab a shovel, start digging. Because <laughs> if you do it, you're going to piss somebody off, right? Like the mask thing. The mask, wearing the mask has people mad. Not wearing the mask has people mad. Now, I guess that the people that said in the first place, you know what we can have a lot of fun doing? Tell these idiots that they should wear a mask. But after that, five minutes later, tell them that, nah, I was kidding. Wearing a mask, that's stupid. And then come back five minutes after that and then tell them, no, you know what? We decided everybody should wear a mask. And then we'll sit back at this table and we will watch what happens for a year. <laughs> Do it and, you know, just piss them off and sit back. Because they've got these, uh, the goons, you know, the thugs with the guns and the billy clubs. They look like they're going to a massacre, for fuck's sake. You know, peaceful protesters. They <laughs> they let people burn shit and hit people in some places. And in other places, the police, they attack old people and women, <laughs> arrest them for what they said on Facebook. And then they put it on the Internet so everybody can see it and go, hey, that place sucks. I sure am glad I don't live there. <laughs> so I suppose what I'm getting uh, is wherever your uh, comfort zone is, that's probably where you live. And if you're somewhere where you don't like it, wow, how did that happen? Mm -hmm. Because society hasn't shifted here. People are still the same. But these institutions, you know, the alcohol institution, they want that out. They're trying to close the bars up. So how are they going to do it? They're going to starve them. Make it unbearable for people to go to a bar. Guess what happens? Bar shits down because no no business. Hmm. But I would assume that the alcohol business would still do pretty good through the retail outlets. Probably do better because, as history shows us, when you deprive people of something, it makes them want it that much more. Except when it comes to oxygen. No, no, no. We don't need any of that. Give me a mask. Give me some shit on my hands. Hey. I need some goop here. Well, I I can still fill the ends of my fingertips. No, no, more goo. <laughs> wow. I know, I'm sorry, but I am just amused at the simplicity of what is going on and how complex the politicians have made it to get the results that they got. And when it's all said and done... Uh, they're going to have to eventually tell you folks, well, you know, we've been resetting the currency. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Because as they've proven so far, they don't give a fuck about homeless, creating homeless. They they don't. There's no human uh, emotion in commerce. Commerce is a thing that we as humans are supposed to worship. Worship and pray to the almighty dollar or kroner or yen or whatever. 
If you trade in boogers, then it's boogers, whatever your commodity of choice is, you know, because there's ways to make a good living in the world still, and there always will be, without using government resources, government banking. <laughs> I did it, so it's it's not impossible, but it does leave you looking very uncomfortable amongst your peers because a lot of people went for the trap and worked and uh and not everybody was like grim and saw the shit come in and said fuck it okay well i may not be rich but at least i won't be miserable so hmm. that's just an opinion i got of you grim over listening to you over the years few years that i've been around here but some people take money seriously, I guess. Me, nah. I don't give up. I don't care because I think some part of me inside has always known that it's just a uh, it's a credit game. And back when it, when before the internet was here, it was so much easier <laughs> to owe people money that you didn't have to pay them that they were never going to get than it is now with the internet webs. See, that's why they. That's why they want to go digital, too. Keep control of every nickel spent. Where it goes. It have the ability to use computers to test. To, to, how many of these did we sell today? <laughs> and they've got the uh, technologies available. You know? and they keep the kids just smart enough to push a button and you know be able to match up the... Uh, Symbol on the screen, so don't fuck that up and push button. There you go. You've got a job. You're a worker bee. And <laughs> things changed. They got, I think, the the wealthy have made us obsolete, you know, through technology. And the banking collapsed, so they couldn't figure out any more ways to extend the story, so they killed it. Hmm. My version of the end of this is not the same as everybody else's. I know that. But mine is a lot of fun. I I enjoy thinking about it. I, I even enjoy talking about it because it hasn't happened yet. You know? But it's always nice to uh, be aware of disaster lurking around the corner and having the good fortune to not turn that corner. And uh, I told this once before, maybe on the dork table years ago, I was visiting my mom and, and my father in London for the very first time. Never been there before. And I was uh, on my way out to go have a, a beer at the pub around the corner from where they were. And for some reason, my mom stops me at the door, which she never does. She yells goodbye. See you later. But this one particular time, she grabs me by the coat. Stops me for about five seconds and tells me to be careful out there. Something weird. I felt it had a bad moment. Okay, uh, you have a good night. And had I left when I wanted to, the truck that w ran into the building, I I was I was in front of it, or I, it hit the, it was in, it was in front of me. I could see it hit the doorway. And had I left, I might have been right in front of the truck when he wrecked it into the store. <laughs> so. To this day, I wonder, you know, uh, was that intervention or was I, who, how do you explain a thing like that? But when I got back and told her, she didn't seem surprised. But after that, she never did that before that. She never did it again after that. Just that one specific night. <laughs> my mom <laughs> saved my butt. But I could also look at it like coincidence. Just like, uh, you know, like a coronavirus believer. Because, well, of course, that's how you get sick and die. You, uh, what? Oh, yeah, dead tissue. You breathe that in and it, uh, it, it, uh, mm -hmm. that's what it does. So I think I almost made an hour tonight just rambling about this, that, and the other thing. Nothing in particular. Get a little bitching out about how, how I see this. Horrible system that we live under. You know, we don't live with it. We live under it. And it's enforced. So, hmm. any notion of freedom or rights or any of that crap that we're all brought up to believe, if you're still living in that, well, 
it's a nice story, you know. I'm sure it makes you like real popular at parties and such. But it's a it's a big load of shit. And I suppose if I wanted to make it real and and good, <laughs> I don't know how I could make it good. I could make it real. Make the government or the uh, whatever you call this, yeah, government could make it a reality and take it seriously and let it hurt my feelings and all that horse shit. But nah, I think I'm going to spend the rest of my days talking about what I think it really is to people that mm. are open to the possibility, you know, because I could be wrong. But if you have the ability to see, something is definitely a miss. We've been fucked. And uh, it's not getting any better. So I'm going to send you the notes I got, Grim. I didn't do much of a show tonight. Just a little little yammer yammer about how I feel, my feelings, you know, because I got all feely. Oh, got me in my feels tonight. Because hmm. I see the world as a, a good thing, you know. Not This isn't a bad place. This is home. You know? This is where I live. Hey, Cowboy Tech. Uh, I don't know. I just spread my fucked up opinions, and if you agree with them, lucky me, you know? Because your opinion of my opinion does not change my opinion. <laughs> Facts change my opinion. In fact, when I have a fact, I no longer have an opinion. I have a fact. So, to those of you out there, in the RLM chat and other places in Radio Land and such that have helped me to get where I'm at, where I feel I'm at, because I'm comfortable. I don't spend a lot of time complaining about other people doing this to this group, and I don't give a fuck about any of that. Just when I go down into the city to go get my milk for my coffee, you know, try to treat the people I engage along the way decent and get home and bring the milk back my big goal for the day my big goal for life i don't plan i don't expect i don't ever demand anything of any well leave me alone sometimes pops out of me but mm, outside of that i'm not much of a demander but i do have those periods where i'm just better off leave me be and we're living in a world where people that aren't um cut out like that, are being forced to isolate and take care of their self, and they weren't prepared for it. So, hmm. the end result of all this help for this imaginary virus that probably doesn't exist, not the way they explained it to us. Whatever this is, ah, we, got, we got a story. Okay. <laughs> but what's coming down the future is going to be a byproduct of all the help we got to collectively get through this global pandemic. And if you listen to the state, the more you listen to them and follow their direction, sadly, in my opinion, I think that the the end is going to be worse for you than it will be for me. Because I'm not playing their fucking game. Thanks a lot for listening tonight on In a Perfect World. I'm Flash. <laughs> and... Uh, We've got other shows on the uh, RLM. There's a there's a whole list page. Go to the chat or go to the chat. Go to the reallibertymedia.com and look at it. It's really easy to navigate. I do it all the time. It's easier to navigate than it is to explain it. And uh, we've got let's see. Ah, oh, Larry Woods and Rob Works. I do a thing with them coming um, Thursday. It's the next thing. And I'm real happy that they're they're getting some listeners. So, and keep up the good work, Larry and Rob, because you got a good message about energy and such. So, I'm real happy to be a bit of that. So, thanks a lot, everybody, and over and out.